Core inflation for the month of March came in at 0.4%, potentially showing signs that inflation is making another comeback and in fact stabilizing at much higher levels than what the U.S. Central Bank is targeting. The S&P 500 is down around 3% for the first time since October of 2023. But this is something that we fully expected, and this is probably not the major turning point for financial markets that everyone is expecting. The S&P 500 right here was overextended. Active investment managers had more than 100% exposure to the market. That means they were leveraged long on the market. That was the highest level since November of 2021, where the stock market peaked before dropping around 20%. These hot readings on the exposure index typically lead to short-term volatility, as you can see in these examples right here, which is exactly what it was telling us here. But it wasn't just fund managers. Retail investors have gotten extremely bullish just over the last few months. In the past, these types of hot readings also predicted you were going to see some short-term volatility in the stock market. So both fund managers and retail investors got extremely bullish on the stock market recently, pricing in very quickly that the Federal Reserve was going to be cutting interest rates in 2024. And this week with the hot inflation print, they got a wake-up call. Long-term bond yields are spiking today. When we look at the previous instances where the 10-year yield has spiked like it is today, typically that has coincided with corrections on the S&P 500. So, so far, this is what is fueling this pullback on the S&P 500. But this rise in yields is not necessarily a major turning point for the United States economy or the stock market. This is a simple correction of expectations that we've been following on these videos and with our members. The Federal Reserve interest rate is currently at 5.3%, and the Fed has been clear about keeping rates elevated until inflation is back under control. When we add longer-term yields on top of this chart, you can see they're substantially lower than where the Federal Reserve interest rate is. And you often see these longer-term yields catch up to where the federal funds rate is. And that's exactly what we've been talking about, that there is a considerable risk of seeing another spike in interest rates if inflation ends up being stubborn. And so based on this combination of excessive optimism and the possibility for bond yields to spike, we have been preparing for the market to pull back. But the big question is, how big is this pullback going to be? Is this the big turning point for the U.S. economy that everybody's waiting for? We don't think so. We don't think that inflation is going to be the big turning point. And so based on that, we think that this pullback could actually end up being quite shallow. The real turning point for the stock market is going to be a recession. That's going to come when unemployment begins to rise. And when the yield curve that's currently predicting a recession right now begins to uninvert. That's what happened in the 2007-2008 bear market. During the 2000 bear market, the yield curve uninverted and unemployment began to rise. Currently, that's not what's happening. The yield curve is not uninverting. It's staying stable and initial jobless claims have been trending lower. Now, we do expect that we're on the edge of actually seeing that begin to happen. But as of now, that's not the case. This pullback that we're seeing is not based on recessionary concerns or economic weakness. It's just a simple correction after overly optimistic investors that got too excited about inflation coming down are getting proved wrong. And as soon as disinflation comes back into the picture, we'll start to see the market pick back up its momentum. So we're actually getting ready to start buying because the general structure of the market is still bullish. The S&P 500 broke out of this large price channel, showing that it wants to accelerate higher. And right now, this pullback seems to be a simple retest before this accelerated trend resumes higher. One risk to this scenario could be oil. Oil has been trending higher recently. Part of this has been fueled by geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. If geopolitical tensions rise, we're going to see that translated into a larger correction on the S&P 500, just like these oil spikes that you see right here also translated into larger S&P 500 corrections. In the event that the war does escalate in the Middle East, our short-term target for the S&P 500 would be a revisit of the 200-day moving average, which is something that occasionally does happen during bull markets, as you can see right here. But in the near term, these are the levels that we're watching very closely with our members at GameOfTrades.net. If you want to follow all of the key levels and setups that we're watching on financial markets, make sure to subscribe to our website.